Okay, class, today we're in section 9.2, graph y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Before, you graph simple quadratic function. Let me repeat, before you graph simple quadratic functions, now you will graph general quadratic functions. Key vocabulary, minimum value, maximum value. You can use the properties below to graph any quadratic function. You will justify the formula for the axis of symmetry in exercise 38 in this lesson. Okay, let's read the key concept. All right, read it very carefully because you're going to need this in order to know how to graph a quadratic function. Now, to graph a quadratic function involves about five or six steps, and you have to know each step. So please read carefully. Read very carefully. Properties of the graph of a quadratic function. The graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is a parabola that opens up if a is greater than zero, opens down if a is less than zero, is narrower than the graph of y is equal to x squared if the absolute value of a is greater than one, and wider if the absolute value of a is less than one, has an axis of symmetry of x is equal to negative b over 2a, you must commit this to memory, has a vertex with an x-coordinate of negative b over 2a, has a y-intercept of c, so the point 0c is on the parabola. Okay, of course, we're going to put this in everyday language as we go through and do our examples. Okay, now example one, find the axis of symmetry in the vertex. This is um, the two most important steps you're going to need when graphing quadratic equations of this form. Consider the function y equals a negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 7. A, find the axis of symmetry of the graph of the function, and then B, find the vertex of the graph of the function. Solution. For the function y is equal to a negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 7, the a value is negative 2. The b value is 12. And the c value, which we're not using yet, is a negative 7. Once again, the a value, negative 2. The b value is 12. A value is always in front of the x squared. The b value is always in front of the x, and the c is always sitting by itself. All right, now we're going to use our formula, our formula for the vertex. What is it? x is equal to negative b over 2a. We're going to use our formula, and I said that wrong. This is the formula for the axis of symmetry x is equal to negative b over 2a. So that's going to equal to, the negative sign is in the formula, so we bring that over. The b value is 12, and the a value was a negative 2. So 2 times negative 2. All right, so now I do my math. 12 is by itself. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I end up with a positive 3. All right, now those of us who can't see how we came up with a positive 3, all right, here we go. We got a negative 12, that negative is in the formula, so that negative is there. That 12 is positive over 2 times a negative 2. All right, now the 12 comes down. What's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. Now don't forget that negative you got on the outside, so what's a negative divided by a negative? That's going to be a positive. So you end up with a positive 3. And that's how they came up with a positive 3. Now that you had a positive 3, now you know your axis of symmetry. Now don't forget what the axis of symmetry is. That's the line. That's the line that would divide your parabola down the middle. All right? That's what that line is. 
In the past, you've only been working with that line being X is equal to zero. Now that line can be in any position. Okay, now to find the vertex, to find the vertex, what it is, the X coordinate of the vertex is negative B over 2A or 3. So the X is the symmetry is the X coordinate for the vertex. Once again, the X is the symmetry, that 3, is the X coordinate for the vertex. The X is the symmetry is the X coordinate for the vertex. So what that means is to find the Y value of the vertex, all we do is we substitute 3 for X in the original function to find Y. So we go Y is equal to a negative 2 times 3 squared. This is our original function. So a negative 2 times 3 squared plus, because that's the X value, a negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 7. We do our basic math and we come out with 11. So now we know the vertex. We know the vertex is going to be at 3, 11. We know the vertex is going to be at 3, 11. The X value is 3 and the Y value is 11. That's our vertex. Axis of symmetry is 3. The X coordinate of the vertex is the 3. We take the 3, we plug that into our equation to find Y. And after doing that, we now know the axis of symmetry and we also know the vertex of our parabola. All right, you're going to need these two pieces of information when you're making your graph of the entire function. Okay, now in example two, we're now going to graph the entire function. So step one, determine whether the parabola opens upward or downward. Look at the A value. Because the A value is positive, we know it's going to open upward. Step two, find and draw the axis of symmetry. Now our equation for the axis of symmetry is x is equal to a negative b over 2a, just like in example one. What's the b value? 6. Excuse me, the b value is negative 6. What is the a value? 3. So we're going to plug this into our equation. So we're going to end up with the negative sign, that's there. The b was a negative 6. And the A was a positive 3. So you're going to end up with 2 times 3 is 6. A negative 6 divided by 6 is a negative 1. And you got a negative, a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. So you end up with a positive 1. So your axis of symmetry is a positive 1. All right, so the next thing you do is now you have found the axis of symmetry. Now you're going to draw the axis of symmetry. So you go to your graph, you locate x is equal to 1. To make that graph, you go right there, you locate the 1, and you make a vertical line. That's going to be your axis of symmetry. This is what splits your parabola down the middle. Okay? This is what splits your parabola down the middle, that axis of symmetry. Okay, now that we've found the axis of symmetry, now we got to determine the vertex. That is, where does it stop? All right, how are we going to find that? Remember, the axis of symmetry is the x value for the vertex. The axis of symmetry is the x value for the vertex. So now we're going to take that x value, and we're going to plug it back in our equation. So we're going to put that one there and there, and determine what the y value is. So to do that, we come down here. y is equal to 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 2. Well, that comes out to be a negative 1. So now we know that the y value is a negative 1. The x value is 1, and the y value is a negative 1. That's our vertex. So now we're going to go and plot our vertex. 
We already have our axis of symmetry. So our vertex says, tells us we're going to stop right there. Right? Our x value is 1, and our y value is negative 1. Once again, x value is 1, y value is negative 1. Don't forget, right here is 0, 0. Okay, now for step 4, the book says to plot two points. Choose two x values less than the x coordinate of the vertex. Then find the corresponding y values. All right, now what that is saying is, this is your vertex. The x value is 1. So pick two values that are less than 1. So you can go 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc. All those are less than 1. But I'm going to give you a slightly different technique to make it a little bit easier for you. All right, now the addition we're going to tell you is this. Of these two values, always let 1 be the y-intercept because it would involve a little less math for you to figure out. Why is that? Because the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So all you got to do, step 4, use the y-intercept. All you got to do is go back to your original equation. y is equal to 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. And since you're going to use the y-intercept, and the y-intercept always occurs when x is equal to 0. So all you do is if x is 0 there, that's gone. If x is 0 there, that's gone. So the y-intercept is 2. So that always let that be one of your points, the y-intercept. A little less math for you have to do, for you to have to do. Okay, now they did that here, but they didn't state it. Notice when x is 0, boom, boom, all you left with is 2. So when x is 0, is y is 2. Okay, now you're going to find your other value. So the other value is always between the vertex and the y-intercept. In this case, it's going to end up being um, a negative 1. Actually, I said that wrong. We're just going to use negative 1. But a lot of times, you can pick a point that's in between there. If we did it this time, it'll make the problem a little bit harder. So we're going to use, here we use 0. So now we're going to use um, a negative 1. So if we use negative 1, we got y is equal to 3 times a negative 1 squared minus 6 times a negative 1 plus 2. A negative 1 squared is 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. All right. Then we got um, a negative 6 times a negative 1. That's going to end up being a positive 6. And then a 2 comes down. All right. Now, what's 3 plus 6? 9. You can see I got ahead of myself there. But 3 plus 6 is 9. And then 9 plus 2 is 11. That's how we came out with 11. All right, now so far, we've determined our axis of symmetry by using the symmetry equation. We determine our vertex by knowing that the x value of the axis of symmetry is going to represent the x value we're going to need to use to find the y value for the vertex. All right. So we got the axis of symmetry, we graph the vertex, we graph the intercept, the y-intercept. Now all we need to do now is just simply reflect uh, over this point. So this is my middle, that's my axis of symmetry. I'm one step away from that, so my next point will also be one step away on the other side. Now I'm ready to draw my smooth curve for my parabola. And that's how you're going to graph. Now, like we said, these problems can get somewhat kind of long and somewhat kind of tedious, and it's easy to make a mistake. Now, normally, if I was explaining this without any detail, this problem would have took maybe about maybe five to six minutes to explain. But to be sure you understood every step, it ended up taking over 14 minutes to explain. So you can see this is a very serious section. 